the most eagerly anticipated game in La Liga so far this season, of course. It's the Clásico between Barcelona and Real Madrid at the Camp Now. There are only four points between the two teams, so it's set to be a real battle over in Barcelona. Hello and welcome to this online edition of The Match. I'm Pablo Folilias and joining me, as always, is Tim Stannard. Hi, Tim. How are you? Very well, thank you very much. Well, as I just said, it's going to be a huge game, isn't it? Yeah, this is a fantastic part of the season. Normally, the season, perhaps, for Real Madrid and Barca goes a little bit like this. You have the league, yeah. Champions League, league, Champions League, ups and downs for excitement. This, at the moment, is like that, yeah. all the way through. Champions <laughs> League semi-final, Clasico thrown in there in between. Champions League semi-final, you couldn't have scheduled it better. It's uh, We're halfway through a, a brilliantly exciting fortnight, and it's already begun in an intriguing fashion, and I'm sure there's going to be one or two talking points on Saturday's game. There certainly will. Well, it's been a busy week for both teams, because, of course, there's a Champions mm -hmm. League. Real Madrid were in Munich taking on Bayern, and Barcelona were in London taking on Chelsea. Both didn't exactly get the results they were looking for. No, it's one of those where, had you offered it to Real Madrid, they might have gone, you know what, we'll take that, because yeah. they did get that away goal, and it is always important to Champions League. Maybe not so much for Real Madrid, though, because they've been yeah. um, not as strong in the Santiago Bernabeu, but what yeah. they can do, of course, is score goals. They're averaging three or four goals there in all their games, so they yeah. have got the firepower to do that. A few warning shots, perhaps we saw in that game again, watching the set pieces, watching the crosses. Indeed. But it was a. Let's not forget they're playing one of the greats of European football, Bayern Munich. Yeah. You have that incentive of playing the final in Munich if they get through. So there's an awful lot of work to be done on uh, next week, or next Wednesday, but. If the game is half as good as the one we saw last week, we're in for a, a corker. Well, Real Madrid were back, of course, mm -hmm. in Madrid training and busy preparing for this next clash against Barcelona in the camp now. What's the latest from the team? What, what, what have you got it's, to tell us? It, 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 there's so much going on yeah. at the moment because <laughs> normally you have quite a few days to kind of absorb Indeed. the Champions yeah. League semi-final and talk about the next one, but the Bayern game is gone. You've mm -hmm. had to throw that out the window. Let's yeah. look at that next week. Exactly. Because, of course, you've got this Clásico, which could well be the title decider. Sandwiched in between yeah, the two Champions if, League games. Yeah. Let's, let's set this up. Real Madrid, a four-point lead over Barcelona. If Real Madrid win this game, it's all over. Yeah. those remaining four games, it's impossible for Real Madrid to, yeah. to, to lose. If they get a draw, I think the league title is all over. I think they'll keep those four points, and I think they'll, they, you know, they can afford to slip up against either it's Mallorca for the last That's game. That's right, yeah. Um, we have uh, Granada. Granada, thank you very Atleti much. Bilbao Atleti Bilbao and, Bilbao Sevilla. and of course Sevilla next yeah. week. If Barca win, then we're in for a very, very exciting period. It's um, obviously it's still in Real Madrid's hands. They'd still have that one-point lead. And again, if you'd offered that to Real Madrid fans and Jose Mourinho beginning of the season, yeah. you'd be going into the final period with that lead over Barca. Indeed, everything's in their hands. So, and the team are fit. And yeah, ready this for thing, this game. I say two thirds is looking good for Real Madrid. They just got to avoid defeat, and it, it's almost over. And you said they're all fit. Yeah, um, a lot of options. Basically, they they could be playing against. Uh, Barcelona and yeah. what's happening at the moment in the press I saw in one paper this week I think it was yeah. Marker 15 different lineups <laughs> that, 15, that are possible right, so they, have, they have an awful lot of the, yeah, they have an awful lot of um, uh, lineups and tactical decisions to make and it all depends on how Jose Mourinho wants to approach the game does he want to approach it by going yeah. for the win building on the recent results where they scored quite a few goals against yeah. Barcelona on the camp now let's remember that Copa del Rey semi of course do they want to um, go for the draw yeah what, you know, do they want to avoid well, defeat? There's, there's plenty of options, but who do you think Jose Mourinho is going to choose for his starting eleven? Well, I think he's going to go for a fairly attacking one. I think we're going to see Arbeloa, Pepe, Ramos. Quentrao's the only doubt, but he does seem to prefer Quentrao in the games against Barcelona right. and in the and uh, Champions League. I think he just feels that Quentrao is defensively stronger. Okay. But you know, Marcelo, I think he deserves a starting role, but I think he'll go for Quentrao. Okay. Kadira, Xabi, Alonso, the only doubt maybe he might enforce that with Lassana Diara if he's looking to avoid defeat or yeah. going for the draw. And then maybe Ozil will be uh, on the bench. I think Di Maria is going to start and do a, a 60 minutes, perhaps, Cristiano Ronaldo. Aldo, of course, yeah. and Benzema. Two players who've, who've certainly was, yeah. proven that they, they can score against Barcelona. Yeah. The, the key man for Real Madrid is not perhaps Cristiano Ronaldo or Di Maria or Ozil plays, but it's Karim Benzema. Benzema. He's going to get a lot more space than Cristiano Ronaldo, and he has a very good record against Barcelona and he looked very good against Bayern. I think he's Real Madrid's key man. All right, well, we'll find out because that game, of course, takes place on Saturday night at 8 p.m. in Barcelona. But on Friday, Real Madrid were training at Valdebebas. And after that training session, Aitor Caranca spoke to the press, and this is what he had to say. No, it's a game, I think, like the one que ha planteado el Madrid las, las tres últimas veces que he ido al, al Camp Nou. No? Yo creo que es un partido que, que las tres últimas veces Eh, todo lo que ha estado en nuestra mano, todo lo que podemos controlar, eh, se ha demostrado que, que hemos estado ahí, hemos eh, empatado, hemos metido goles y bueno, pues el partido de mañana no tiene por qué ser diferente desde nuestra actitud. No, yo creo que son 
tres puntos eh, importantes porque lo vengo diciendo, cada vez queda menos y los tres puntos son importantes y, y está claro que si eh, sea cual sea el, el resultado van a quedar cuatro partidos y desde aquí vamos a seguir trabajando con con la misma naturalidad y como lo estamos haciendo hasta ahora. Se gana, se empata o se pierda. Es claro que este equipo está demostrando lo que está haciendo este año y, y así vamos a seguir hasta el final. Well, that was Aitor Caranca speaking at Valdebebas. He's just, he's, uh, he made it out that it was just another game. It's he's not just any no, other game. No, he's trying to do that, and this is what Pep Guardiola yeah. has been trying to do. They've obviously looking yeah. ahead playing now to, down. yeah, playing it down, because yeah. look what happened against Sporting. They, sure. they struggle there. Three points is three points for every single game. Well, how's Pep Guardiola's team looking? Well, against Chelsea, I thought they were a little bit unlucky, but I had to say very well played to Chelsea. Yeah. I mean, they didn't complain about the result after the no, game. They, they said, didn't. Iniesta said, the football's all about scoring goals. You exactly. don't score goals, you don't win the game. You can have all the possession. Hitting the bar is just like hitting it 20 yards over. So they did well against Chelsea, but their confidence will be a little bit rocked. And they would have expecting maybe to be able to take a 1-2-3, even 4-0 lead against Chelsea into, this yeah. uh, into the second leg. Instead, they've got to put all their energies into this game against uh, Real Madrid on Saturday and then put all their energies into Chelsea. Yeah. That's going to stretch them a little bit. Well, Barcelona made a couple of mistakes during the season. And mistakes mm -hmm. for that, they, uh, defeat and a couple of draws. Yeah, they, were, them... they, they were losing focus away yeah. from home, perhaps. And looking at 10, 11 matches ago, mm. I was in front of Pep Guardiola against Atletico yeah. Madrid. He said, we are not going to win the league title if we do it extremely hard. But I'm still not sure they are going to. As I said, it's all on Barcelona this game. They must win that game. And right. normally Real Madrid go into these matches, perhaps it's the second leg of a game where they've got a bit of catching up to do sure. or they need to win it, but they don't have to. And it's going to be difficult for Barcelona. There's a lot of pressure on them. This is their last chance to win the league title. Who do you think Pep Guardiola is going to choose for his starting 11? Then? Well, he's Let's got a fairly a small squad, so yeah. it's, going to be, it's going to be quite difficult. He doesn't have the options of Real Madrid. Mascarano and Piqué, I think Piqué we saw on the bench against Chelsea. Indeed, He'll yeah. be back. Puyol playing at left back. Puyol could seem to play anywhere on the pitch. Mm -hmm. Up front as well. Dani Alves pushing up on the right. They might play it back through with Alves pushing up. Busquets, Iniesta, Xavi, of course. And Alexis on the right. Big game for Alexis. Again, Messi is he, he has he, a quiet one. Could he be a day? He might be a day. He's, no, yeah, he's, um, we'll he's, on he's one of those ones where we're not sure for certain. What, sure. They're going to keep their injuries um, very much. Uh, yeah, because it's all about Cesc under, as, under well, yeah. as well. So. Cesc might come in for Pedro. Cesc might come in for Alexis. He might even do a surprise. We might see Cuenca coming in yeah. or Deo. He might move Iniesta up into sure. the front three or he might move uh, Cater into the midfield. Basically, I have no idea. You have no idea. Well, that's great, Tim. No. Well, at least you were honest. But it, again, again, it's yeah. basically it's attack, attack, attack from Barcelona. They've got to win this game. Real Madrid don't have to. OK, well, let's take a look at the rest of the games coming up on Match Day 35 because there are other games taking place in be, La Liga. Uh, and going we'll to get your predictions now. So start with there with Mallorca against Zaragoza, Saturday at 6. Zaragoza's uh, rescue to continue Zaragoza away win. OK, Sporting against Rayo, Saturday at 6. Sporting really probably going to go down uh, Rayo with an away win, I think, on that one. Barcelona against Real Madrid. I'm going to go what everyone else seems to be going for. I'm going to go for a draw 2-2. Two, two. It's a high-scoring draw 2-2. Two, okay. two. Sevilla against Levante. That's at 10.30. It's been postponed by half an hour because, of course, of all the coverage yeah. from the Classico. Sevilla lost 5-1 to Catafi. On Monday, they'll win this one against Levante. OK, Granada against Getafe Sunday at midday. Granada home win. OK, Real Sociedad against Villarreal Sunday at midday as well. More pain for Villarreal, a draw. Racing, who really need to win, uh, otherwise they're gone. Basically, they're yeah, into the if, second. If Granada win and Villarreal win, then Racing are down. Racing will win this one, but only just. OK, and then Atletico Madrid against Espanyol Sunday at 6. Wouldn't surprise me if it's a draw, but I'm going to go for a narrow home win for Atletico. Another must win for Valencia oh, against Betis. They're really struggling. saying something. I was there at the Calderon on Sunday. On Thursday night, thrashed by Atletico Madrid. They've got to win against Betis. They will. OK, and finally, the Monday night game is between Osasuna and Malaga. That's at 9pm. Scrappy set-piece 1-0 win for Osasuna against Malaga, who will need to win that to get a Champions League place. All right, Tim, well, we'll find out next week how you get on. Who do you think is going to score in that, in that draw that you predicted in Barcelona? Messi, Ronaldo to get one each. And I'm going to go for Di Maria and... Putting on the spot. Puyol. And Puyol. Yeah. Okay. All right, Tim, well, that's all we have time for on this week's uh, show. Don't forget that match takes place at 8 p.m. Central European Summertime, of course, the Clásico between Barcelona and Real Madrid. Real Madrid Television will have all the latest post-match interviews on the... We can also catch it on the web as well on all the social media networks. But from Tim and myself here in the Spanish capital, bye-bye.